so let's talk about corrals next because I think corrals, even though you don't, they're, they're not, they're before you start going. I'm trying to think of anything you would need to know before you even go to the race. Um, so for, I, in philosophy, we've never run a 5k or the half, so I'm not really sure how the corrals work for that. I would assume that the 5k is the same as the 10k, and when you register, you pick a time that you think you can run. We picked, I don't know, like 10 minute miles, which is probably a little false. We usually run at like 12, but that's fine. 15 minute miles. <laughs> um, and they put you in a corral based on that. Um, and the half marathon, and I would assume the marathon is the same way, they put you in a corral based on a race that you run in the past, or if you don't submit a time, then you're pretty much essentially at the back. So corrals, we'll get to when we're actually talking about getting to the race, but that's just something to keep in mind that if you are doing a higher mileage race, you might want to find another race to do before so that you can at least submit a time. They're looking for at least that, again, I don't know the full marathons, but for the half marathons, they're looking for a 10K time of... Oh, let me think about this. I want to say, I'm not sure what the 10K time, but I want to say the half marathon time they're looking for you to submit is, do you, can you run under two and a half hours or can, or do you run over two and a half hours for a half marathon? If you say you run over two and a half hours, then you do not submit a time. If you say you run under, then you do have to submit a time. So we submitted a time for our princess 10K as our time, which I actually don't think is fast enough. Now that I think about it, I did the math and it wasn't right. So we are actually running a 10K locally. Submit that time um, to that and hope that we can get a corral placement. And I'll explain, like I said, more later what exactly a corral is and why that's important. But that's just something to look into when you're registering. We'll get you through all those questions. So anything else like before we go? Oh, costumes. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you want to prepare. You gotta dress. You want to dress up. You don't have to dress up. Some people like really dress up. Like last time, there was actually a guy who was running around us in a bell costume, and that's excessive, and that's awesome for him. But it's also really hot, so we prepare like in mostly running clothes and add like little accessories here and there. But some people really go out, and that's good for them. A lot of people are probably from the south and can handle the heat a little bit better than we can. So and they are entertaining. Yeah, they are. Mm -hmm. sure they take their mind off running. Not breathing. Yeah. <laughs> So um, we typically wear, well obviously you're going to wear sneakers, and if you're a new runner, don't let the, the race be the first time you wear any pair of sneakers, that's like just a basic running tip because a lot of people don't actually think that, they're like, oh I'm going to get this brand new pair for the race, but don't do that, that's a terrible idea, um, you will get blisters. Um, but you know, sneakers, socks, um, if you wear any like sort of compression or KT tape when you're running, I wear one up, uh, like just like an ace bandage on my knee. Um, and then we always wear compression shorts because, again, it's hot, and I always am very honest in my videos about chafing, and I get really bad chafing, so this prevents my chafing. My mom doesn't get it, but, um, she still wears <laughs> compression shorts, and we always wear a sparkle skirt on top of it. I'll show us a picture of what we're wearing in this video, too, so you can see. And then we usually wear a tank top. Well, always wear a tank top. We're not t-shirt people in general. I mean, if it's cold, it probably would be nice, but... Yeah, but you can bring a jacket and throw it along. Yeah, that's true. Um, so we usually wear a tank top with something on it. Last time, my sister made us tank tops that said 10K. We also have had, when we did the wine and dine, we wore a tank top that said rum. I thought you said... Uh, run. I thought you said rum. <laughs> and we did, like, pirate-themed out costumes. Um, and then the first race we ran, we all picked like a different princess and and very loosely like dressed off that character, um, which is cool. So and then for the 10K coming up, we're gonna be doing I think Olaf themed outfits. I I didn't really tell you that. <laughs> and, I'm finding out now. <laughs> well, I kind of talked about it this yeah. morning. And then for the half marathon, we it is Cinderella themed, so we are going to be dressing. In those colors. In those colors, essentially. I already, I feel like we should make shirts that say, like, run like it's midnight or something. Yeah, we can run with those wands. Oh, yeah, we have one. I have wands over there from uh, Cinderella's Royalty book. Alright, anything else before that you can think of? No, just, no. oh, you mean probably eat properly before. 
you know, like the day before. Oh, we well, yeah, we'll get to that. Okay. This is like before you even leave. Oh, oh before you leave. Yeah. <laughs> Obviously, please pack all your stuff when you're going. Mm -hmm. um, and <laughs> yeah, that type of thing. Oh, um, make sure you bring some stuff like to bring, if you decide to wear a running bag, we use running bags from Amazon. Oh, mine sounds serious. I just spilled water all over it. Otherwise, I'd show you. But if you Google on Amazon, like running uh, fanny pack, essentially, that's what we use. There's tons of options for you. Um, so make sure you bring that and anything you might want to bring with you on the run, which we'll get to on the race day. Uh, and if you should forget something, they sell it. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's true. Snipers and all. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We'll get to the expo, too. So, all right. I'm going to cut it off for now, and we'll go on to the next topic. All right, so we are going to talk about the expo next. So here we are, you're at Disney. Um, <laughs> hooray. <laughs> I'd be more enthusiastic if I was actually there. Um, and not running first. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, um, okay, oh yeah, one thing we should talk about. The Run Disney website, like I said, is very full of information. Um, one of these things is that there are race, hotel, like there are certain hotels that are considered race hotels. Um, meaning that these are the hotels that will definitely have like transportation to and from the XO and to and from the the race. I, I don't think that there's hotels anymore that aren't included, but just something to double check uh, because the first time you ran one, definitely there was only a limited number of hotels that were considered race hotels, but race weekends are so big now, I don't think that's the case. But they still do consider, that is still part of the website, so make sure you check that out. So. Say you're at your hotel, we'll say Wilderness Lodge because that's where we stay for the princess races because I'm weird and I have to stay in the same place. Um, and so we um, are needing to go to the expo. Now, for anyone who's never run a race, any single race that you go to is going to have some degree of an expo. Um, this is essentially where you need to pick up your packet. So smaller local races, like really tiny local races, probably just have a table that you sign in in, but like the half marathon here in Buffalo um, has a pretty big expo mm -hmm. too. Like if you're used to running, you know what an expo is, but just in case you're not, that's what it is. So the expo is, uh, I believe, always at World of Sports. I can't imagine it not being there. So ESPN, what's that? I think like, so. Is that yeah. what it's called? ESPN, ESPN World, yeah. by World of Sports, is mm -hmm. that what it is? Something like that. So, uh, you're at your hotel. There's going to be a specific bus stop. Um, typically, at least in our experiences, when where the DME, the Magical Express, drops you off, if you take that spot, and that's going to be an Expo bus, and there's going to be a sign that says Expo bus here. They come like every, five they minutes, say like every 20, yeah. but they're like every 5 to 10 minutes. And they pick you up. It's not Disney transportation. It's mirrors. They contract out for this. And so don't be surprised if you're like, where the heck is the Disney bus? That's not what it is. So you get on this bus. You'll typically go to other hotels like you regularly would on a Disney bus. And then it takes you to um, Wild World of Sports. So when you get dropped off there, it's don't. It's a little confusing. <laughs> don't yes. panic. Overwhelming. Also, so. there's a lot of walking uh -huh. considering you have to run typically the next day. Uh -huh. Um, and, uh, but there's plenty of people there to help you out. So the first thing you need to do before they let you really essentially do anything else is you need to pick up your bib, which is your race number. So, um, up to this point, if you're running a 5k, again, I am assuming because I have not run it, or a 10k, um, you will not have your corral placement yet. Um, but for the, <coughs> excuse me, the half marathon, and I'm assuming probably the full marathon, um, you will already know your corral placement, which makes it a little bit easier because you know your number, so you should be able to figure out what corral you're in. So um, what, the buildings seem to change every time, so I won't tell you specifically what building to go into, but you're going to need a waiver, which they'll send you before the race. They get released about a month before. You can print them out at home. I typically bring them with us, and then, um, you know, it's just easier. But if you forget, no big deal. There's tons of places you can print them where they've already printed them. And you always need a photo ID. You cannot run under someone else's name. They're really strict about that. Uh, they will check your photo ID, like, pretty strictly. They, like, really look at it. So, um, and then you go in. You, um, I'm trying to think. We did get our bib numbers for the 10K. Yes. We just didn't know what corral we were in. So you go to whatever booth has your bib number on it, and you pick up your your bib. They're really cool. Like it sounds silly, but they're like really they're fun. Like the princess ones usually say Princess Megan, Megan or whatever. <laughs> and uh, if you're doing a challenge, which is another thing we haven't done or I didn't really talk about, so a challenge is. Uh, 
to multiple races or two races. So there's a fairy tale challenge, which is the 10K and the half marathon. That's a whole separate bib. And then as we found out awkwardly, they also take your picture of that in that bib for whatever reason, which we tried to get a photo pass picture, which it wasn't. Um, I should have said that in the beginning, but those are options. So that's an option. Most of the shorter race weekends, like I talked about, will have that 10K uh, half marathon challenge, which whatever it's called, it just depends on the race. Um, but the marathon weekend has like the nutso challenges, so which what I like to call them. So like the like glass the dopey and the goofy and no oh, no, oh you're right glass slipper what does I call it whatever my mom's right it's called the glass slipper challenge whatever I said was wrong. Um, so that's like people who can do like the five k ten k half and full. Whatever I forget which no, one. No, you might be right. Isn't glass slipper just for the um, princess? Yeah. So they don't have a But phone. I didn't say glass oh, slipper. Okay. I said something else. Oh, okay. Uh, what is that? Is that dopey or goofy? I think it's, I think it's, I think it's dope dopey. Dopey. I said do I mean, well, never mind. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm going to do it. She says, I'm not putting. I'm, I'm doing that. Oh, my God. I should not have had that for two chicken. Just for the record, I was only going to do one Disney run. But now we're going on four and five, so. Yeah. <laughs> So who knows? She also says she's not running a full, but we'll see. No, I'm <laughs> Yeah, no, I'm not. Um, goofy, I don't know. Whatever, you can look at it. I think it's a dopey. Yeah, Goofy, I think, is like the, the half and the full, maybe. maybe. And yeah. then you can also do like the 10K half and full or something. I don't know, whatever. We're never going to be doing that. Mainly because you have to get up too early in the morning for me. I would probably consider doing a 10K half challenge for Princess Weekend. would probably be the only challenge that I would even remotely consider. The rest of them, I just can't imagine myself getting up every day. Anyway, back to the expo. Um, after you pick up your bib, then you're free to roam around the rest of the places. Well, that's not true. They kind of shuffle you over to get your shirt. So you're always going to get a shirt with a Disney race, and they're nice shirts. They're um, the nice... Uh, Nylon? I don't yeah, know what you're I don't know, whatever. Yeah. The... Salty. Like, they're like, yeah, they're, um, they're specific name, but they're like tech shirts, I think they call them. But uh, we, um, you go get those uh, for the... For the wine and I think we got a long sleeve, we but typically we got short sleeves otherwise for the princess races. But a long sleeve's nice to run in in the winter here. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Um, but you go get your shirt. You can exchange sizes, but it's very limited. So, I mean, try and pick the size that you want, which you'll do when you register. You pick up your shirts, and then there's tons of vendors in there. So we got, like, headbands last time from this cute little sparkle vendor. Um, tons of places. I mean, actually, like, DVC has a booth there. It's not all Disney stuff, though. It's, like, the KT Tate people. That's what my mom was saying. They sell shoes. The Re I think they're Reebok. Like, some yeah. brand that we would never wear because we run in Mizuno's. But... Um, they're themed like for princesses. There's tons and tons of stuff. Um, the, a lot of the stuff just FYI does sell out, especially the shoes and stuff. So we are never one to like rush to the expo. We, we actually planned our February trip like so that we don't have an extra day there before the race because we're, I don't know, we just would rather like spend as much time as little, as little time yeah. running, more time in Disney. Yeah, it's a little time like stressing out about the run and more time in Disney. So we would not spend a lot of time at the expo, but a lot of people really like the expo and spend like multiple days there. There's like snacks and stuff. And then there's a, at least new to us this year, there's a whole other building that was just strictly Disney merchandise, um, which was cool. So they had tons of magnets, uh, pins for people who like pins, I don't know, like Alex and Ani stuff. Mm -hmm. Like the characters are also in there. You can meet characters in there. So that was cool. Um, uh, and, and at the expo, there's tons of signs for you to get photos with, and um, like I said, there are characters typically, so which is cool. The character lines aren't always even no. that crowded, so so that's it about the expo. And then easy as pie, you literally go back to where you got the bus, and you take it back to your hotel, or you know, like one time we were trying to go to the Magic Kingdom, so we actually just took something to take the monorail, you know, like got to the Grand Floridian or something to take the monorail. Um, although I wouldn't recommend that because you're going to be carrying a lot of stuff because at the very least you're getting a shirt in your bib and I don't know, you, just don't, want to, yeah, you, you don't, don't want to carry it. it. So, um, you know, so you might want to bring those pens. Oh yeah, so many <laughs> pens. <laughs> um, so that's that for the expo. Uh, I think that's it for the, uh, and the most of the rest of the questions my sister and I came up with are about the actual race date. Can you think of anything else about the expo? Mm -hmm. Bring your credit card. Yeah, <laughs> bring your magic band. <laughs>
Oh, uh, speaking of magic bands, this year they came up with a specialty magic band for the princess race, and I almost bought it, but it was like 40 bucks. I was like, eh, it's not worth it. Is that price? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that I didn't buy it. Okay, let's talk about the night before the race, or the day after new leading up to the race. Number one is hydration. Number two is stress. Yeah. No. <laughs> we are, at least me, I am terrible at hydration. I'm not a good water drinker. I'm not a good water drinker in real life. Um, but Disney races are typically very hot, so make sure you're drinking water or Gatorade. We try to not drink much pop because it dehydrates you, um, and also you need to go to bed early, so, um, that's that. So, and then we usually eat, it, this is again preference, um, I've also been very honest about my stomach issues, so I have bad stomach, uh, I need to eat a little bit earlier in the day if I, so that I don't get a stomach ache at nighttime. Or I'll probably still get into stomach ache, but it won't be as bad as the usual one I would get. So we typically eat around like three. Mm -hmm. um, we don't eat the healthiest food, I would say. No. No. We're not pasta people in general. And then the last time I ate pasta, I, I got sick before a race at the wine and dine. So now I'm definitely not eating pasta before a race. Um, so we usually eat, last time we ate like chicken finger. We eat pizza. pizza. Yeah. yeah. We eat pizza and french fries. But again, it was, it was at like three, yeah, and we're fine, yeah, so, um, and then you want to make sure that you just kind of set everything out in the morning, because you are going to be getting up super early, um, and then we typically try to go to bed at like eight, eight thirty, depending on how tired you are. This last time, it actually worked out for us, because our flight was super early the day before, so we were actually like exhausted, so we went to bed pretty well. I'm trying to get some sleep. I mean, I feel like every time in the morning you get on the bus and everyone's like, I didn't sleep at all. Like, huh. that would be terrible. So at least try to get some sleep. So, all right. That's the night before. 